All right, question 12 of the practice problems for practice 5165. This is our first little taste of calculus as we're asked a question about some limits. So what we're told is the limit as x approaches some constant c of this function f of x equals zero. And the limit as x approaches that same constant c of some other function g of x equals zero. And what we're supposed to figure out is what can we conclude about the limit as x approaches that same constant c of the quotient of those two functions, f of x over g of x. So this is something that you may have seen in like the first week of a Calc 1 class when you're learning about the definition of the derivative or the difference quotient. So the classic example is something like the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3. So in the context of this problem, the c is the 3, f of x is x squared minus 9, and g of x is x minus 3. And note that the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 is 0, because 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 9 is 0. And the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is also 0, because 3 minus 3 is 0. But when you're evaluating this limit, at least the first way you learn how to evaluate this limit, what you do is you recognize that x squared minus 9, because it's a difference of squares, factors as x minus 3 times x plus 3. And when we're evaluating limits, we're allowed to cancel out these terms that have our variable in there. So this is just the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. This x minus 3 and this x minus 3 cancel out. What's the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3? It's just asking you the question, what does x plus 3 get really close to when x gets really close to 3? Well, it'll get really close to 3 plus 3. In other words, 6. The limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 is equal to 6. Is this value infinite? No, 6 is not an infinite number. Is this value equal to 0? Nope, 6 ain't 0. Is it equal to 1? Nope. Our answer must be D. This value cannot be determined from the information given. Not to say we can't figure out the 6, just saying that the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is not always equal to 6. For example, the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 16 divided by x minus 4 going through the exact same steps would end up being equal to 8. Just because the numerator approaches 0 and the denominator approaches 0, that does not necessarily mean that the quotient approaches any specific number. I mean, not to get too deep into this, but really what's going on here is our numerator, x squared minus 9, is this parabola shown in red. As the x value gets close to 3, the y value gets close to 0. Our denominator, x minus 3, is shown in blue, and the same thing happens there. As the x value gets close to 3, the y value gets close to 0. And what we're supposed to do is consider the quotient of those two functions. But the fact that the graph in blue, loosely speaking, gets to 0 quicker than the graph in red does, Right, consider this point, 3.1 or something. The height of the blue graph is really close to zero, but the height of the red graph is not that close to zero. It really comes down to the speed at which these things approach zero, not just the fact that they approach zero themselves. Here's x squared minus nine divided by x minus three, if you're wondering what that graph looks like. This is actually a little bit misleading. It's this graph in green, but there's an open circle at x equals three. That open circle just disappears when I take my mouse off this point for whatever reason. It's undefined because if you try changing all the x's into 3's, you'll get 0 divided by 0, which is undefined. But the limits aren't concerned with the value of the expression at 3. They're concerned with the value of this expression as I approach 3. So when I'm really, really close to 3, a little bit below it or a little bit above it, you see that the y value gets really close to 6. One more comment here. I showed you how to evaluate this limit kind of the most basic way. But there's an easier way to evaluate this limit or at least a slicker way to evaluate this limit, and it's called L'Hopital's rule. Often to indicate that you're using L'Hopital's rule, you put an equal sign with a little h up on top. And what L'Hopital's rule tells you is that when you have an indeterminate form like we have here, that is, the limit of the numerator approaches zero and the limit of the denominator approaches zero, or infinity over infinity, instead of evaluating this limit, we can evaluate the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. In other words, if you can take the derivative of the top here, the derivative of x squared minus 9 is 2x, then you can take the derivative of the bottom here, the derivative of x minus 3 is just 1. L'Hopital's rule tells me that the limit in red will be the same as the limit in blue. And the limit in red is a lot easier to figure out because the limit in red is just asking me what's the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x. Well, if x gets really, really close to 3, 2 times something really close to 3 gets really close to 6. Same answer we got down here without having to factor and cancel. L'Hopital's rule is pretty cool, and I could see it being useful in a different problem on this exam. Just be a little bit careful. Make sure you only use L'Hopital's rule if this is an indeterminate form. 
In other words, if it's a zero over zero type or an infinity over infinity type.